welcome to MLC TV News R, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the conflict state of Nigeria. I am Khadijat Mohammed. First, the headlines. Federal government releases 62nd independence program. Governor Yahya Bello flags off NVMA's 2022 Kogi Veterinary Week. Russia's flee to border after military call-up. And... Olivia Giroud becomes the oldest scorer in France's history. Now the news in detail. The federal government has released the timetable for the celebration of the 62nd independence anniversary of Nigeria. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, released this during a press conference in Abuja. He said there will be a church service on September 25th, 2022 at the National Christian Center, Central Business District, Abuja, at 3 p.m., which will be followed by a public lecture focused on national unity on September 29, 2022, at the State House Conference Hall at 10 a.m. On September 30, 2022, there will be a special Juma prayers at the National Mosque, Central Business District in Abuja. October 1, 2022, a presidential broadcast at 7 a.m. Later on the same day, there will be a military parade at Eagle Square Central Business District, Abuja, starting at 10 a.m. A world of national honors will be held as part of the 62nd Independence Anniversary on October 11, 2022, in Abuja. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has flagged off the Kogi Veterinary Week 2022, organized by the Nigerian Veterinary Medical Association, NVMA, in collaboration with Kogi State Ministry of Agriculture. The ceremony, which was also held in commemoration of the World Rabies Day, took place at the Muhammad Buhari Square in Lokoja. Speaking through his deputy, Edward Onoja, Governor Bello stated that his government is committed to creating wealth through agricultural activities such as livestock rearing, noting that this has led to efforts to suppress conflicts and diseases. He explained that the state government has provided an enabling environment for agriculture by ensuring that farmer header conflicts are a thing of the past and organizing various programs such as Veterinary Week and mass animal vaccination in past years. Governor Bello said his administration has invested heavily in disease eradication in livestock noting that this is important because many of these diseases can be transmitted to humans. He explained that eradicating disease in animals not only benefits the animals but means a healthy life for humans. The governor received an award of excellence from the NVMA for his support to veterinary medicine in the state while appreciating the efforts of the association and the Ministry of Agriculture as well as other stakeholders who organized the event. He promised continued support for veterinary medicine as well as to give attention to the challenges of veterinary practitioners. The President, Commonwealth Veterinary Medical Association, Dr. Ola Tunji Nasir, had expounded on the need for collaboration in eradicating rabies and called on the government to take more than passive interest in eradicating the disease. The Kogi Sector Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, held its third quarter 2022 retreat for heads of operations towards achieving better services during the Ember months. The workshop, which was held on September 23, 2022, was aimed at ensuring smooth operations of the officers to enhance productivity and effective performance. The Kogi Sector Commander of the FRSC, Stephen Daulong, while declaring the workshop open, checked operational officers on dedication to their duty. The sector commander described the operational unit as very critical and lifewire of the command to deliver on its constitutional mandate. He therefore urged the benefiting officers to take the training very serious and ensure that they implement what they learned on their duty places. He also charged the operational officers to ensure free flow of vehicles on all public highways across the state during the Ember months. Spokesman of the Heads of Operations, 
Warifu Adeyemo said that the retreat is an appraisal of their performances with a view to assessing areas of progress made and challenges in order to pave way for greater improvement on the job. Sokoto State Governor Amini Tambowal has replaced his equity state counterpart, Kayode Fayemi, as the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, NGF. Tambowa assumed the position at the National Economic Council meeting in Asurok Villa, Abuja, after Fayemi transferred the button of office to him. The director of media and public affairs of NGF, Abdul Razak Belo Bakindo, confirmed the change of button in a statement. According to the statement, Tambua will be holding the fort until May next year when a proper election is conducted among the governors. Before his new role, Tambua served as vice chairman of the forum under Fayemi in the last four years. Recall that Fayemi was recently elected as the president of the Forum of Regional and State Governments in Saidia in the state of Casablanca in Morocco. Vice President Professor Yemi Osimbajo said the NGF chairman had taken the wind out of their sail because it was meant to, on behalf of the NEC, commend the equity governor and NGF chairman's informed and patriotic services to the council in the last four years, and that was enhanced by the chairmanship of the NGF. Admitting that the NGF had ensured that they moved to a true federation, not just in words, but indeed as well. Professor Osim Bajo prayed that Dr. Fireman's services, both nationally and globally to development and to all of the good which the nation deserves and the global community deserves will continue. Dr. Fayemi will formally hand over the chairmanship of the NGF to Aminu Waziri Tambowal on October 16th. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman Al Khali Baba, in active and strategic preparation for the 2023 general elections, has, along with the force management team, met with strategic police managers comprising Assistant Inspectors General of Police and Commissioners of Police across zonal state commands and formations to review evolving political programs laid down by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and chart clear pathways for a smooth electoral process in the countdown to the elections. The IGP charged all officers present to boost the security of their public space towards guaranteeing a crime-free and enabling environment for political campaigns and other components of the electoral process. Noting that following the announcement by the INEC for the commencement of electioneering campaigns by all political parties from 28 September 2022, the national political space will become very active and susceptible to increase in politically related offenses. He tags all strategic police managers on discharging their duties before, during and after the electioneering process in line with the dictates of the Electoral Act 2022 and the Code of Conduct and Rules of Engagement for Security Personnel on Election Day issued in 2020 by the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, ICCES. Similarly, the IGP emphasized the fact that all quasi-security outfits established by various state governments and local communities operating under different nomenclatures, structures and orientations have no legal roles under the Electoral Act and in the electoral process. He therefore directed all police managers to ensure they are not utilized by political or community actors for any role during the electioneering campaign and other electoral processes as such will amount to an illegality, a threat to national security and inimical to the nation's democratic interest. The Inspector General of Police urged all Assistant Inspectors General of Police and Commissioners of Police in charge of zonal and state commands to work assiduously and engage an all-inclusive approach by liaising with resident electoral commissioners, leadership of political parties in their commands, and all relevant stakeholders, increase intelligence gathering activities, and upscale deployments to achieve the goal of re-energizing the force to sustain a stable internal security order. 
we go on a short break. We will be right back. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. The police have arrested an Abuja-based lawyer and human rights activist, Professor Zainab Duke Abiola, for allegedly assaulting her female police orderly, Inspector Teju Moses. The professor, who was arrested alongside her housemate, Rebecca Enechidol, reportedly assaulted the orderly for refusing to do some domestic chores she assigned to her. In a video clip that went viral, the officer is seen in uniform bleeding seated on the floor and asking to be taken to the hospital for medical attention. First Public Relations Officer CSP Muiwa Adejobi, who confirmed the arrest in a statement, said the police were going after a fleeing domestic worker complicit in the assault. He said the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Baba, strongly condemned the assault and directed that the suspect should be prosecuted. Adejobi said the IGP had ordered the withdrawal of all police personnel attached to the professor and expressed disappointment that an individual who claims to be an advocate for human rights could violate the rights of another person. On foreign news, Japan will open its doors back to vaccinated foreign tourists after more than two years of closed borders due to the COVID pandemic. Tourists will be able to visit the country without a visa and will no longer need to go through a travel agency from 11th of October. A cap on daily arrivals will also be lifted. Visitors will still need to prove their triple vaccination status and submit a negative COVID test result to enter. The anticipated influx of travelers will be a welcome boost to government and local businesses and comes as the Japanese yen has slid to its lowest point against the U.S. dollar in six months. The country has allowed visitors since June, but to be part of tours. Kishida also announced a domestic travel incentive scheme that will give discounts on travel, theme park prizes, sporting events, and concerts. Japanese residents and citizens will be eligible for an 11,000 yen subsidy. The world's third largest economy was one of the last Asian powerhouses to keep its borders closed due to COVID health concerns. Its death rate is the lowest among the world's wealthiest nations, while the country's vaccination rate is among the highest. Japan also never mandated lockdowns or mask wearing, but many locals readily adopted protections. Russian men are attempting to leave the country to avoid a military call-up for the Ukraine war. Queues have formed at border crossings since President Vladimir Putin announced a partial military mobilization, which could see 300,000 people summoned to fight. The Kremlin says reports of fighting age men fleeing are exaggerated. But on the border with Georgia, miles-long queues of vehicles have formed including men trying to escape the war. Some of those heading into the neighboring country have used bicycles to bypass lines of cars and evade the ban on crossing on foot. A man reported a 12-hour wait, citing the partial mobilization as a reason for leaving Russia to continue his studies. Georgia is one of the few neighboring countries that Russians can enter without needing to apply for a visa. Finland, which shares a 1,300-kilometer border with Russia, does require a visa for travel and also reported an increase in traffic overnight, but said it was at a manageable level. Other destinations reachable by air such as Istanbul, Belgrade or Dubai have seen ticket prices skyrocket immediately after the military call-up was announced, with some destinations sold out completely. 
Turkish media have reported a large spike in one-way ticket sales, while remaining flights to non-visa destination can cost thousands of euros. It's now time to join Malik Jonah for sports updates. And on sports update, Oliver Giroud became the oldest scorer in France history as they beat Austria to boost their hopes of avoiding Nations League relegation. France dominated the game with Kylian Mbappé having an early goal ruled out for an offside and Oriol Antutra many bicycle kick being tipped onto the bar. Oliver Giroud set up Mbappé for a fine opener taking on several defenders before firing in from 16 yards. The AC Milan striker brilliantly headed in France's second goal. At 35 years and 357 days, he is 70 days older than Roger Marche, was when he scored against Spain in December 1959. Olivier Giroud is now only two goals behind Thierry Henry's France record of 51. France would have been relegated if they had lost the game. Move above Austria going into Sunday's Group A1 final in Denmark. Still on sports, Super Eagles head coach Jules Persidio has stressed that he hopes to win the 2023 African Cup of Nations for Nigeria. The next edition of AFCON is built to hold in Ivory Coast. The Portuguese tactician had promised to bring smiles to the faces of Nigerians by winning the long-coveted trophy after the country last won it in 2013 under the guidance of late Stephen Keshi. Speaking ahead of Nigeria's international friendly game against Algeria, Persio said the friendly game will put his team in shape to win the next AFCON tournament. The 62-year-old also gave an update on the injury to Leicester City midfielder Wilfred Ndidi after the player was ruled out of Nigeria's international friendly game against Algeria. And that's sports update on MLC TV News. I am Malik Jonah reporting. Back to Acasta for more stories. Thank you, Jonah. On entertainment, let's join Matthias Ayodeji. On entertainment, Nigerian rapper M.I. Abaga and his wife Eniola Mafe have officially tied the knot. The music star and his wife had their traditional wedding ceremony in Lagos on Thursday, September 22, 2022. The couple looked incredible in their traditional outfits as they couldn't get their hands off themselves. In a grand reception held in their honor, Emma and his wife danced to the admiration of their guests. The wedding ceremony was attended by several celebrities and the cream de la cream of society. Among those who attended the wedding includes Banky W, I.K. Osaki Doa, Bright Basket Mart Okocha, Jesse Jacks, M.I.'s brother, and host of others. M.I. announced in April that he was set to walk down the aisle with his then-girlfriend Eniola. The rapper recounted how he was introduced to Eniola by Aldo Mai Corey of Chalk City back in 2020. Eniola is the founder of New Nigeria, an organization that was formed in the wake of the hashtag NSAS protests across the country. And that is all on Entertainment News today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter. Reporting for MLC TV. Thank you, Matthias. And that is the size of our package today. Join us next week at this same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Melakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV. Follow us on Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter at MLC TV 1. For your event coverage, information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join us Friday and Saturday to watch our special programs. It's Melakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. 
I am Khadija Muhammad. Please continue to be a border's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.